This is Smart Pizza, and in today's hour-long episode, I'll show you the most incredible animal births caught on camera. You'll see the vivipary process on land and underwater. You'll find out which animals lay giant eggs, which animals give birth to millions of babies, and which animals can give birth to real mutants. In this episode, I'll show you how babies are born through mouth and back, and how animals are reborn by shedding their skin. It's definitely worth seeing. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Animal births that give you goosebumps. Sometimes life begins with a fall from a height. This is how elephants are born. A baby weighing 198 to 264 pounds literally falls out of its mother's womb. At this point, it's wrapped in a protective membrane that softens the impact of the fall. The female helps feed the baby for four years and continues to care for it for six years after giving birth. It's not much if you consider that an elephant pregnancy lasts about two years. Stingray litters range from 5 to 15 newborns. Although stingrays are ovoviparous species, pregnancy does not take place in the same way as in mammals. The developing embryo receives nutrients not through the placenta but from the egg yolk. As soon as the supply runs out, the female begins to secrete a special nutrient fluid that acts as milk. The babies hatch even before they leave their mother's body. As soon as they're born, they begin an independent life. As you can see, the process is not the same as in mammals and not the same as in fish. Stingrays have their own unique reproductive mechanism. Giraffes are the tallest land dwellers, and this has a significant effect on the giving birth process. When a calf's born, it first sticks out its front legs then its nose and head. Within an hour, it leaves its mother's body. But before it takes its first breath, it has to fall from a height of about six and a half feet. Tallness is one of the reasons why female giraffes give birth standing up. The calf emerges from its mother's body with its front legs forward. The newborns are up to 5.9 feet tall, which is about the same height as an average European male. Orangutans reproduce in much the same way as humans. Pregnancy lasts eight and a half months, almost as long as in humans. Newborns are completely dependent on their mother. Like newborn human babies, they have a very weak neck, which must be constantly supported. After birth, the female clears the infant's airways of mucus and presses it against its body. It does all this instinctively. In rabbits, pregnancy lasts about a month, so a female rabbit can produce several litters over the course of a year. Rabbit babies look like moving hairballs. If you have rabbits and you notice something like this in your yard, your rabbits have most likely had offspring. Rabbits use wool and soft, dry grass as nest-building material. Rabbits are rather secretive creatures. Before giving birth, the female always tries to find a secluded place. Who gives birth in the most incredible ways? The female anaconda, while pregnant, finds a deep puddle and stays in it until it gives birth. Pregnancy lasts from five to nine months. The number of individuals in a brood can reach as few as six or as many as 40 young. Newborn snakes almost immediately enter an independent life and begin to explore the world around them. The giant panda demonstrates an equally interesting way of reproduction. This mechanism resembles the reproduction characteristic of the pomegranate tree. Like newborn human babies, newly born panda cubs are completely helpless. They have no color and are completely blind. After the cub is born, the female is completely devoted to caring for it. It nurses and cares for the baby for several days, not moving a step away from it and not being able to take a snack or a sip of water. A maternity leave would certainly do female pandas good. Sea urchins are incredibly fecund and can lay up to 20 million eggs. Of course, only some of them survive. The female and male release a cloud of cells into the water. Within hours, those cells that do not fall prey to predators begin to become fertilized and turn into spherical creatures covered in tiny hairs. Then they begin to form a skeleton. At this stage, they're ready to reproduce. Generally, animals reproduce either by laying eggs or by producing live babies. Jackson's chameleon can reproduce both ways. A brood can have up to 30 individuals. The female carries the eggs inside its body without laying them, unlike most oviparous species. Tigresses are true masters of pregnancy disguise. Despite their relatively short gestational period of three and a half months, they're able to hide their big belly until the stage when they're 10 to 12 days away from giving birth. 
It's during these days that they're busy finding and setting up a place to give birth and care for their offspring. A litter usually contains two to three cubs, but sometimes it reaches seven cubs. As a rule, the interval between births is 18 to 22 months. It's difficult for a female shingleback lizard to carry offspring. As a rule, one or two babies are born. It would seem that there's nothing wrong with this, but it should be taken into account that the total weight of the babies is one-third of the female's weight. Imagine a female giving birth to a baby that would correspond to a seven-year-old child. That's about how the giving birth process of this lizard is. Sloths spend most of their time in the treetops. They give birth to their cubs in a very unusual way. The female hangs from a branch, holding onto it with its forelegs. In this position, the birth takes place. The cub climbs onto its mother's chest and clings to it. Barnacle geese lay their eggs on the cliffs at a height of 393 feet, which is approximately the height of a 40-story building. Immediately after hatching, the chicks face the problem of a lack of food. There's no vegetation on the rocks. After a few days, they begin to jump out of the nest, trying to make a soft landing. In hippos, pregnancy lasts eight months. Before giving birth to their offspring, the females leave the bloat for two weeks. During this period, they need to build a strong bond with their calves. They are born in the water and immediately learn to swim. Naked mole rats are extremely prolific creatures. They form colonies headed by queens. The queen is the only female with the right to procreate. The litters of first-time mothers can have up to 27 babies. It's the maximum number among animals. Porcupines are known for the sharp spines that cover their bodies. Fetuses in utero have soft hairs instead of spines. However, they begin to harden and sharpen almost immediately after birth when they come into direct contact with air. Gastric brooding frog. Interesting name for these frogs, isn't it? It even seems strange that at first, scientists nicknamed these amphibians cannibals. Why so? It's all about the special birth process. It turned out that the females swallow the fertilized eggs. This surprised scientists, but what surprised them even more was that the stomach literally serves as the female's womb. It serves in this role for seven to eight weeks, which is how long the pregnancy lasts. During this time, the female doesn't eat anything, and its body secretes a substance that shuts down gastric juice production and thus protects babies from digestion. In their mother's stomach, they're not in any danger. What happens next? The eggs turn into tadpoles, and the frog begins to vomit them up. The babies come out through their mother's mouth as it burps them up in small batches. How you like that? Darwin's Frog In 1834, while traveling in Chile, Charles Darwin stumbled upon a rotten tree leaf. So it seemed to the scientist. What was his surprise when the leaf came to life? Darwin realized that he had discovered an amazing frog. The species was named after the scientist. This frog surprised not only Darwin but also the other scientists who observed its birth. Darwin's frogs have the father as the mother. It takes on the burden of pregnancy and selflessly carries the children. The task of the female in this tandem is to lay the eggs. The task of the father is to fertilize and swallow them. Yet, yeah, once again, we're dealing with a frog that eats the babies. Gradually, the female lays more and more eggs and the male eventually swells up. The heroic father can carry several dozen babies. At first, the embryos develop inside where they feed on the yolk containing the egg. When the supply is depleted, they begin to parasitize at the father's expense, and when they're a little older, they leave the paternal home. The male who burped his offspring finally gets a chance to rest, but not for long. After a few months, the cycle's repeated. Common Suriname Toad Another frog in this episode. Or rather, a toad. Is someone going to swallow babies again? No, that's not the case this time. The common Suriname toad boasts other, even more unusual birth processes. These toads give birth through their backs. Imagine that. During mating, the male and female perform a mating dance underwater. The female lays several eggs while the male simultaneously releases its seed. The female then dives down where the eggs fall directly onto its back and stick to it. The male supports this process by pressing the eggs against the skin of the female's back with its hind legs. As a result, from 40 to 144 eggs are attached to its back. After 11 to 12 weeks, the pregnancy comes to an end 
and the babies are born coming out of the mother's back. The process is interesting, very unusual, but at the same time a bit nasty. Let's leave frogs and toads alone because there are other animals besides them. For example, seahorses. The birth of these creatures is also surprising and interesting, at least because the main role in them is played by the father. During mating, the male swims up to the female. Both fish cling to each other and, at this moment, the male widely opens its pocket on the chest and the female throws a few eggs into it. The process is started. The male begins to carry the babies. By the way, there can be a lot of babies. The number of eggs at times reaches a thousand individuals and even more. During about three weeks, the seahorse protects the babies, provides them with nutrients and cleans the water from the products of life. When it's time to give birth, the male experiences contractions and begins pushing the babies outward. The little seahorses shoot out of it like from a cannon. It looks spectacular. Snail Something similar can be observed in the birth of the most famous snails in the world, the giant African land snails. As hermaphrodites, these snails mutually impregnate each other and each individual makes a clutch on the right side of the head. After a while, the eggs mature and the laying process begins. Like seahorses, giant African land snails experience a kind of contraction and begin to shoot their young. Like cannonballs, the babies fall out of the snails one by one. Every second a new individual is born. The newborn snails feed on the remains of their own eggs at first. Depending on the climate, giant African land snails reach puberty at 6 to 15 months and live for up to 5, 6 or even 10 years. They grow all the time, but after the first two years of life, the growth rate slows down. Baby giraffes are up to 180 centimeters tall and weigh 50 kilograms. Not bad for a newborn, right? You could say that newborn giraffes are some of the largest cubs in the entire animal world. And what about the biggest eggs? Kiwi has them. It's worth clarifying that I'm talking about the ratio of egg size to the size of the female. A kiwi egg can weigh half a kilo, and this despite that the female weighs 2 to 4 kilograms. Can you imagine how much that is? To carry and give birth to something that's a quarter of your weight is very cool. The length of the egg, which reaches 20 centimeters, while the female is about 50 to 70 centimeters long, also amazes. Towards the end of the pregnancy, Kiwi even has to forget about eating because the food simply stops fitting in. The egg takes up too much space inside. Fortunately, such suffering lasts not very long. After a couple of days, Kiwi lays an egg and goes to a well-deserved rest. Then it's up to the father. It incubates the egg and leaves its offspring only for the feeding period. Cat mother of many babies Cats are another matter. They produce many offspring at once and do it many times. How many? The next heroine of this episode has the answer. Way back in 1952, there was a record for the largest number of kittens born to the same cat. The heroine mother was a tabby female named Dusty that gave birth to a total of 420 kittens in its lifetime. 420 babies! Can you imagine how much that is for a mammal? And on August 7, 1970, the Guinness Book of World Records representatives recorded the largest litter. Then a four-year-old Burmese cat named Antigone from Great Britain gave birth to 19 kittens at once. However, not all of them survived, but fortunately the majority did. One girl and 14 boys survived. The Most Prolific Chicken Chickens can also boast of prolificacy. Usually, they lay about 200 to 250 eggs every year, but there are some surprising exceptions. Italian leghorn chickens are considered the most prolific mother chickens in the world. The average leghorn lays around 300 eggs a year, and the record breakers lay even more. By the way, not only do these feathered birds have unusual births, but they also have unusual eggs. Sometimes they can be really unique. For example, in 1956, a leghorn chicken laid an egg with two yolks and double shell. It's got another egg inside of it! What the heck? In the 1970s, leghorn eggs were recorded in the USA and the USSR, in which there were nine yolks. The prolificacy of cats and chickens is astounding, but far more amazing is what the ocean sunfish are capable of. They're huge creatures that can reach three meters in length and weigh a ton, or even two tons or more. Such creatures must have large litter, but how large exactly? The ocean sunfish is the most prolific fish in the world. A female can lay 300 million eggs at a time. That's some incredible numbers. But then why aren't the world oceans filled to the brim with ocean sunfish? It's simple. 
the ocean sunfish is a very bad mother. It shows absolutely no concern for its offspring, so almost all 300 million eggs die. Literally a few or a dozen manage to survive. The most famous eggs in the world are chicken eggs. In general, they're small. However, some can reach an incredible size, but this is rare. At the same time, some animal species regularly lay gigantic eggs that are astounding in size. Stay tuned as I'll show you the largest animal eggs in the world. The Biggest Eggs The eggs belonging to the gharial open this list. This reptile is a species of crocodile. Unfortunately, gharials are hunted for their unique skin, so they're on the verge of extinction. Gharials are easily recognized by their long, elongated jaws, which they use to catch fish. It's this shape of mouth that distinguishes them from other crocodile species. Gharials go out on land to bask in the sun, build their nests, and make a clutch. Their eggs are elongated, 7 centimeters long and 5.5 centimeters in diameter. The female buries them in the sand, and they're warm by the sun. A young female lays 35 to 60 eggs at a time. The mother protects the nest with the clutch from the lizards until the offspring emerge and continue to do so until the babies learn to defend themselves on their own. Next, we have the golden eagle bird of prey. Unlike gharials, female golden eagles are larger and heavier than males. Every year, a female golden eagle lays one to three white eggs with brownish-gray speckles, which are 7.5 centimeters in length and 5 to 6 centimeters in diameter. Then it incubates them for about 45 days, and its partner provides it with food. 80 days after hatching, the chicks begin to fly and leave their nest completely after five months. The following large eggs belong to a giant lizard with the beautiful name of the Komodo dragon. These lizards not only lay eggs but also eat them. They do not care which eggs they eat – bird eggs, snake eggs, turtle eggs, or the eggs of other lizards. Komodo dragon eggs are about 10 centimeters long and 6 centimeters in diameter, and weigh up to 200 grams. The female guards the nest for 8 to 8 and a half months until the babies hatch. Young lizards are born in April or May. Once born, they leave their mother and immediately climb nearby trees. To avoid potential dangerous encounters with adult Komodo dragons, young Komodo dragons spend the first two years of their lives in the tree canopy, where they're out of reach of adults. Cranes share the next place in terms of egg size with emperor penguins. Cranes' eggs reach a length of 11.5 centimeters and a diameter of 6.5 centimeters. The female lays two eggs a year with a few days interval. After about a month, a chick hatches from there. Emperor penguins lay eggs about the same size, 12 centimeters long and 9 centimeters in diameter. A few hours after the appearance of the egg, the male, which has brood pouch, starts taking care of the egg. The female, after starving for 45 to 50 days, goes to sea to feed. In any weather deterioration, males gather in tight groups, which helps keep future offspring alive. Next are the emu eggs. They're about 15 to 21 centimeters long and weigh about 2 kilograms. Emus grow up to 190 centimeters in height and reach a weight of 55 kilograms. Their eggs have a peculiarity. After laying, the eggs are green in color. Then the color changes, sometimes to charcoal black. The female lays up to 15 to 25 eggs, and the male incubates them and doesn't let anyone near the clutch. Not even the female. And the first place belongs to the ostrich. Its eggs are 21 centimeters long, 15 centimeters in diameter, and weigh 2 kilograms. Due to these parameters, they have a shape closest to a ball. The shell of these eggs is also very thick, about 6 millimeters. Usually, a male ostrich has several females, one main and several secondary ones. The main female lays up to 20 to 60 eggs, depending on the region. The nest is placed on the ground and is dug by the male. When the hole is ready, the female takes its place. All other females then lay eggs in the same nest, and in about six weeks, the chicks are born. By far, ostriches have the largest eggs among birds at the moment, but there have been even cooler records in history. Take for example the eggs of the elephant birds. They were up to 32 centimeters long and 20 centimeters in diameter, and could weigh up to 10 kilograms. The birds themselves were up to 3 meters high and weighed about 450 kilograms. Unfortunately, this species disappeared from our planet several centuries ago. The Most Unusual Eggs Shark About a third of sharks lay eggs, which take about six months to develop. 
The unusual shape of the egg capsule saves the babies from the unstable sea and from being eaten by predators. For example, the horn shark egg in the shape of a spiral protects the baby shark from predators. A prey of this shape is not easy to swallow, and the strings on the cat shark's eggs allow them to get hooked on the underwater ground so they don't end up on the shore after the tide. Mantis The mantis lays eggs in foam, which eventually hardens and becomes a protective capsule. The insects attach the clutch to the stems or branches of the plant, or even place it on the ground. Mantis eggs successfully survive the winter and temperate climate, hatching in the spring, whereas adults cannot withstand cold temperatures. Lacewing The lacewing's clutch resembles that of an outlandish plant because the eggs are arranged on one centimeter long filaments. They attach themselves to plants, most often to those where a colony of aphids lives. After hatching from the eggs, the little insects descend to the plant and use the aphids as food. This, by the way, is how the lacewings earned their fame as the savior of gardens. Who lays eggs in an unusual way? Fire salamander The breeding process of fire salamanders is not fully studied. In addition, there are significant differences in the breeding cycles of salamanders of this species depending on the habitat and its altitude above sea level. As a rule, shortly before giving birth, females gather on the banks of reservoirs and enter the water choosing such coastal areas of mountain streams where water is clean enough, but where there's no strong current. One female gives birth to about 50 larvae in several steps over the course of 7 to 10 days. In captivity, the fire salamander has been known to lay eggs with unformed larvae that finish their development within a few days in eggs laid in water. Sea turtle Sea turtles are remarkable because they lay their eggs in the places where they hatch themselves. To do so, they swim many kilometers, females crawl out onto dry land, dig a pitcher-shaped hole in the sand or other soil with their hind legs, and lay the eggs in it. Then the female fills the hole with sand and carefully rams it down, making the clutch as inconspicuous as possible. The entire process takes about an hour, after which the female returns to the ocean and no longer cares about its offspring. During the entire nesting season, which happens every two or four years, the female lays four to seven clutches of 150 to 200 eggs each. However, the percentage of sexually mature turtles per clutch does not exceed a hundredth of a percent, which is a serious obstacle to the recovery of the sea turtle population. We've seen the animals giving birth to offspring on land. Now let's look at how birth happens underwater. Next, you'll see how dolphins and whales are born, and you'll learn what's special about the birth of baby octopuses. Yellowhead Jawfish It's unlikely that many of you have heard about this fish, which lives on coral reefs in the Caribbean Sea. Yellowhead jawfish live at depths of 3 to 40 meters. Small fish with a length of 10 to 12 centimeters is easy to recognize by the bright yellow head and silvery body. Yellowhead jawfish prefer moving through the shallows in small groups of up to 70 individuals in each. As in the case of the seahorses, the male individuals of the species attract particular attention of scientists. They're great babysitters and nurse all their babies themselves, and do it in a very unusual way with their mouths. After the female lays eggs, the male fertilizes it and puts it in its huge mouth. The nurturing process isn't easy. For the entire nurturing period, the male has to give up food, and in order to feed the eggs with oxygen, it periodically spits out the eggs and sucks them back while they're not scattered far away. However, unlike the seahorse, with the appearance of fry, the paternal instinct of the yellowhead jawfish is disabled, it loses interest in the offspring and no longer cares about them. Frilled Shark Surprisingly, scientists still know little about this ancient shark species. The species was first described between 1879 and 1881, but since then its study has progressed very slowly. The main reason for the difficulties is considered to be the great depth at which this ancient shark lives. It lives in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans at a depth of about 1,575 meters from the surface. By the way, the frilled shark looks more like a sea snake or eel than the shark's closest relatives. Because of the presence of primitive features, the frilled shark is called a living fossil. Although its size is relatively small, the maximum recorded length was about 2 meters. Females of the species are larger than males, which isn't surprising. They require increased stamina to bear offspring, because pregnancy of this species lasts up to three and a half years. Unlike other fish, which give birth to a huge number of fry, 
most of which do not survive to adulthood. These sharks are focused on quality, not quantity. This species has the longest gestation period of any vertebrate, with the female laying its eggs inside its own body. The babies develop inside the eggs, feeding on the yolk, and hatch only when fully mature and ready to survive on their own. A newborn prehistoric shark baby is about 50 centimeters long. Unfortunately, scientists haven't yet been able to get detailed footage of the birth of frilled sharks, but they don't lose hope of filming a full documentary series in the near future. I'm sure they'll succeed because they've recently discovered new details of the birth and development of whales with the help of cameras. Stay tuned to find out how it was and to see the births of other sea animal babies. Octopus Did you know that baby octopuses hatch from eggs? Unfortunately, this is the most positive fact of octopus reproduction. Females of this order of sea creatures can bear offspring only once in their life, so this process is extremely important for them. Octopuses inhabit all tropical and subtropical seas and oceans, from shallow waters to depths of 100 to 150 meters. They prefer rocky coastal areas, looking for caves and crevices in the rocks. The nest for their future babies is a hole in the ground, encircled with a rampart of stones and shells. After fertilization, the female builds a nest in a burrow or cave in shallow water, where it lays up to 80,000 eggs. It's always taking care of the eggs. The female is constantly ventilating them by flushing them with a stream of water, as well as constantly removing any foreign objects and dirt from the clutch of the eggs with its tentacles. Surprisingly, during the active phase of their lives, octopuses boast excellent hunting skills and are very fond of snacking. But during the entire period of egg development, the female is left at the nest without food and often dies of exhaustion after giving birth to its babies. Deep-sea octopuses spend several years near the clutch of eggs because the low water temperature makes egg development particularly long. Unfortunately, not all babies manage to survive to maturity after hatching. In general, the survival rate depends on the habitat region and other specific conditions. In some cases, only 1% of the offspring survives. Dolphin. Many people adore dolphins, but have you ever wondered how many babies of these amazing creatures are born? Unlike many ocean fish, dolphins are viviparous. Depending on the species, a female dolphin pregnancy lasts from 10 to 18 months. It's noteworthy that the female part of a pod of dolphins surround the future mother on all sides, supports it, and protects it from attack by predators. Before giving birth, it swims away from the group accompanied by an older female, the so-called godmother which will help it in the birth, acting as a midwife and then a nurse. It will look after the baby while the mother gets food. Later on, the babies are fully nurtured and raised exclusively by the female part of the pod. By the way, the female is able to give birth and raise only one single baby dolphin for several years. The newborn baby tries to swim from the first minutes of its life. The mother calls it with a cry and nudges it with its nose, raising the baby to the surface of the water to give it an opportunity to take a breath of air thus opening its lungs. It's only a few weeks after birth that the baby gets used to the water and learns to swim. It'll take three to five months before the babies will get their own food. However, the pod has enough time to raise them, considering the fact that one female cannot have two or more babies at once, and new members of the group reach maturity not earlier than at the age of five years. Whales Usually, in case of mammals, a male and a female form a stable couple at least until their offspring becomes fully independent. During this time, the mother feeds the babies with its milk and the father protects the family and gets food. However, in case of whales, things are different. Once the female's fertilized, the male safely returns to the pod. Females bear offspring, usually from 10 to 12 months, but as a rule, a baby is born 11 months after conception. Some involvement of other whales in the fate of the offspring can be seen when, after almost a year of bearing offspring, the female prepares to give birth. As in the case of dolphins, at this point the other females in the pod surround it and do not leave, assisting and protecting it from predators. As a rule, only one baby is born, but it's born with a fully developed layer of fat, necessary for the thermal insulation of the animal. The baby makes its first act of breathing at the moment of its surfacing. This reflex is stimulated by the sensation of environmental change. Like other marine mammals, the newborn whale cannot swim. It waves its tail desperately, but it doesn't manage to move an inch. 
For the first hours of its life, it's helpless and doesn't even stay afloat because its body mass exceeds the density of water, and its lungs are not yet developed enough to take in the necessary amount of air. Whales Feeding Most recently, researchers were able to film whales feeding their young. This process is very difficult to observe because whales are very large animals that can move around the entire world ocean. Thanks to cameras, scientists from the University of Hawaii, Stanford University, and the University of California filmed how humpback whales feed their babies. Each year, female humpback whales give birth to their babies in the warm, shallow waters of the Hawaiian archipelago and nurse their offspring from January to March before their long migration to Alaska. The research team set out to find out how often and for how long whale babies feed to get strong enough for their spring migration. Special cameras were attached to seven humpback whale babies using suction cups. The team also used drones to observe the whales from above. As the scientists note, they managed to get unique and rare footage, which allows studying the process of feeding humpback whales. Experts hope that the data obtained will help to learn more about the life of these incredible animals. Let's get back to land. In the animal world, incredible surprises sometimes happen. A cow can give birth to a unique mutant calf, or become a mother heroine giving birth to triplets, and pigs can give birth to two-headed piglets. All the details are further in this episode. Two-Headed Mutant Calf December 2021 was a month full of shock for Brazilian Delci Busato when a mutant calf was born on his farm in the state of Espirito Santo. When the farmer came to the stable on the evening of December 13th, he was shocked to find that the calf, which had just been born, had two heads. The cow that gave birth to this unusual calf is about six years old. This is its third offspring. The previous two of this brood were without any abnormalities. And this calf is very weak. The unusual animal cannot stand on its own feet, lies down all the time, and eats with the help of people. The farm workers have to feed the calf from a bottle. The farmer's family turned to veterinarians for an expert opinion. However, even they do not know exactly what could lead to the fact that the calf was born with two heads. It's assumed that this abnormality was caused by a change in the genome which could have been influenced by external factors, as well as the condition of the cow itself. Moreover, Delci Busato noted that the veterinarians could not answer the question of will the calf survive at all, therefore, for the time being, the question remains, and the farmer has to keep a close eye on his unique animal. Two-Headed Piglet The year 2019, according to the Chinese calendar, was the year of the pig. A resident of the village of Kalain in the Philippines received a wonderful gift of fate at the beginning of the Year of the Pig. In the household of Adelita de Lipe, a piglet was born with two heads, two noses, and three eyes. The locals were frightened by it, while the owner of the animal, having quickly recovered from the shock, considered it unique. This gift of fate was given a double name, Mara Clara, and placed in a separate cage. According to Adelita, the piglet was completely healthy, and surprisingly, it had a lot of energy. It drank the mother's milk by itself, that is, it didn't have to be fed from a bottle. Nevertheless, the woman still surrounded the piggy with extra care. Even earlier in the summer of 2016, a farmer from China's Sichuan province had also surprising news. His pig, which was about three years old, gave birth to a two-headed piglet. After birth, three eyes and two pig snouts looked at the Chinese man. Although the man farmed for a long time, he'd never seen animals with such abnormalities. The Chinese farmer even allocated a separate enclosure for the unusual baby to make it as comfortable as possible. He was known to take care of the piglet as a baby. There have been cases of two-headed piglets born before, but as we know, such animals often died a few days after birth. But the Chinese farmer claimed that the piglet was born perfectly healthy. Many people learned about the unique animal at the time, and some citizens even offered up to $400 for such a unique individual. However, the farmer turned them all down. No one knows what happened to the pig then. A cow having many calves For farmers, the birth of one calf is already a blessing. But what if a cow gives birth to three calves at once? Then such a case can be called a sensation or even a miracle, especially when all three are born healthy. We can say about this cow 
that it is a mother heroine. Even twins are rare with these animals. It happens in 2 to 7 percent of cases. Triplets are born in just 0.03 percent of cases. Kangaroo Kangaroos are quite unusual animals, but they surprise even more when it comes to their offspring. It's not just carrying a cute little furry lump in the pouch, which it turns out isn't born there right away. It's much more complicated than that. Actually, for a long time, even zoologists could not answer the question of how a kangaroo gives birth, despite the wide distribution of these animals in Australia. Only at the modern age of the development of science, scientists have understood exactly how their births take place. Generally, depending on the species, these marsupials give birth to their offspring 30 to 40 days after mating. And then that very day comes. A kangaroo baby is born, but at the embryonic stage. These babies are completely unrecognizable as kangaroos. The creature looks more like a worm, both by its color and size. Newborns barely exceed a couple of centimeters in length and weigh less than a gram. From birth, their front paws are strong enough and they're well oriented by the smell. That's why, just having made themselves known in the world, the naked and blind baby, clutching at its mother's fur with its claws, reaches the pouch by itself and immediately starts eating the mother's milk. Baby kangaroos spend from six to eight months in this position until they become fully mature. Donkey It's not an easy process for donkeys to come into the world. Pregnancy of domestic donkeys lasts from 11 to 14 months. But a donkey can give birth to its baby in just 40 minutes. During three days before delivery, it produces milk and then stops eating and shows in every possible way how uncomfortable it is. The process itself takes place in a lying down position. Sometimes donkeys may need the help of a human. Then the new mother spends the next few hours cleaning itself up. After giving birth, animals usually take care of their offspring. There are many creatures in the animal world that would do anything for their offspring. But some animals, or rather their offspring, would disagree with this statement. After all, their parents can safely be called horrible. Further, you'll learn why lions, hippos, and dolphins can be called cruel parents. Cuckoos Cuckoos are bad mothers. I don't think you're surprised by this statement. We often hear about it. But what's the meaning of parental nonchalance? Is it a peculiar manifestation of love or embodiment of wisdom? The fact is that a cuckoo can lay up to 25 eggs during the nesting period. Mother cuckoo doesn't always have an opportunity to brood and feed a flock of voracious nestlings so it searches for foster parents in advance. Cuckoos are very patient and cunning. They keep a close eye on the nest of potential adoptive parents, and as soon as the hostess goes away for a while, the clever cuckoo changes eggs. It manages to do it in a matter of seconds. The stranger egg is swallowed by the cuckoo, thrown away or carried away in its beak. Eggs of cuckoos are usually similar to the eggs of their potential guardians in color though somewhat larger. So most often, other birds don't notice the substitution. Most interestingly, cuckoo chicks are not much different from their hapless parents. They're just as cunning. Apparently, it's in their blood. The cuckoo chick develops much faster in the egg than the chicks of other bird species. Therefore, having hatched in someone else's nest, it throws out other, weaker chicks so as to not share the attention of its new parents and get all the food by itself. Lions. Lions are the only cats that form social groups. It seems, in this case, they should have an idol. The mother lioness caring for its lion cubs and the males keeping their eyes open so that no strangers disturb the peace. But the laws of the lions are somewhat different from our naive ideas. Young males face a bitter fate. When new males take over the pride and displace the leader, they most often kill the young males, the so-called offspring of the exiled lions. Most often, this fate awaits lion cubs that are under two years old. The lioness is indifferent to the spectacle and doesn't rush to defend its own children. Now these lionesses are the future mothers that will give birth to the new head of the lion's pride. Hippos Hippos are some of the largest animals in the world. We think of them as calm, slow, and clumsy, but it's not that simple. Hippos can attack anything they think poses the slightest threat. And as for parenthood, mother hippos are rather caring animals, protecting their babies throughout the lactation period. They can fiercely protect little hippos from dangerous predators, 
But who would have thought that babies still need to be protected from dominant male hippos that may not hesitate to finish off the young animals? The reason for infanticide among hippos are actually poorly understood, since these animals are hard to get close to. Perhaps dominant males do not want to share the attention of females with anyone else and therefore attack the babies. There's also the theory that males are aware of the overpopulation in the bloat and the dangers that may await in case of drought. Therefore, they exterminate the extra ones beforehand. Hamsters These little fluffy creatures are just adorable. But what if I told you that they're not so harmless animals? They can even do some very scary things. If one day you notice the mysterious disappearance of some little pink hamsters, you should know that their own mother ate them. I don't believe you. What are they guided by, committing such atrocities against the helpless babies? One of the possible reasons is stress. The female may feel that taking care of its babies is beyond its strength and it's not able to stand it at all. Therefore, getting rid of the babies is the most ideal solution in its mind. Or too many babies have been born and the female may not have enough milk. For this reason, it's forced to cut down one half of its offspring in order to feed the other half. Pandas It turns out that these cute black and white bears can also be included in the list of bad parents. When a panda gives birth to twins, the mother nurses only one baby. What did the second baby do wrong? Panda cubs, like any other, are completely helpless and require their mother's precious time and constant attention. And the panda is the only vegetarian bear in the world. To maintain a normal life, an adult panda still needs to eat about 20 to 30 kilograms of bamboo a day. How to find and eat so much bamboo and cope with two little babies? How? I don't know! This is a difficult task, and the solution is as follows. Mother Panda chooses only one baby and leaves the second one to its fate. According to its logic, it's better to have one tough guy than two weaklings. But there's another reason why Mama Panda is listed as a bad parent. It's very careless with its cub. The tiny panda may look for a warm place in its mother's fur, and the panda can pile on the baby with all its weight while it sleeps, or even step on the baby. Black Bear While the mother panda thinks it's better to raise one good-looking cub than to suffer with two weaklings, there are animals that, having the exact opposite opinion, would not agree with the panda at all. For example, the black bear. It usually has two or more cubs, which it raises until they're about a year and a half old. But if the female black bear gives birth to just one baby, it'll abandon it to the baby's own misfortune. Why waste its energy on just one? It's far better when there are many babies. The black bear remains full of hope that it will have one next year. Apparently, its motto in life is more the better and the merrier. Christmas Island Red Crab The mass migration of Christmas Island red crabs can be classified as one of the most amazing natural processes on Earth. The migration occurs every year from October through January. Christmas Island red crabs move from tropical forests to the coast to breed. The territory of the island during the migration period is covered by a peculiar carpet of more than 120 million crabs. Male crabs always lead the way and therefore are the first to reach the coast. The females follow. They can lay up to 100,000 eggs. Now, these are the little crabs. Aren't they cute? So the parent crabs, tired of a long road, eat the growing offspring, these very small crabs, to somehow recover their strength. Cruel. Doe hares Doe hares are not the worst mothers, but they're quite often not there for their babies. When hares are born, sighted, large, and woolly, immediately after birth they're full of mother's milk, which is six times fatter than cow's milk. Thus, they stay to digest it. The pause between feedings is three to four days, and for this time the mother leaves the baby hares. Another doe hare can take care of them if it happens to be nearby. According to experts, doe hares leave their babies to minimize the chance of predators finding the burrow where the helpless babies are. Dolphins Dolphins are said to be some of the most intelligent creatures on our planet, but they also have a dark side that will give you the creeps. And that applies mostly to males. They can kill little dolphins. The thing is that the mother takes care of the baby dolphin long enough, respectively, all this time it's unavailable for mating. For this trivial reason, the males get rid of their offspring. The poor baby dolphin can become a victim of its own negligent father or another dolphin that's shown interest in its mother. Further, the females, having lost their babies, lose the sense of courting them, which is quite logical. At the same time, they become available to males again. Crocodiles Crocodiles are very dangerous animals, and no wonder. That's why they're predators. 
Their dinner can be python, wild boar, antelope, buffalo, and many other animals. But some crocodiles eat each other. Mostly, they choose young congeners. After all, if a crocodile starts eating the exact same crocodile, what would come of it, right? By the way, what kind of parents are they? You'd be surprised, but among reptiles, they're considered almost the most caring ones. For example, female crocodiles can carry their eggs or babies right in their mouths, and despite their sharp teeth, they don't cause their babies the slightest trouble or harm. Did you know that hundreds of species of living creatures on this planet are forced to regularly get out of their old bodies and literally be reborn? This process looks impressive. Stay tuned for unique footage of the rebirths of crabs, tarantulas, and snakes. Bearded Lizard The bearded lizard, or the eastern bearded dragon, is the common name for species of reptile from Australia. Their natural habitat is savannas, open wood, and arid areas. Why do these lizards get such a strange name? The reason is that when a bearded lizard is attacked or threatened, to intimidate, it inflates a large leather sack on its throat, which resembles a human beard. Agamas grow to 65 centimeters in length. In the wild, they live from 7 to 9 years, but in captivity, with proper care and maintenance, they can live 10 or even 15 years. Males are larger than females, though their development depends on the reptile's individual abilities and breed. Despite a ban on their sale since the 1960s, bearded lizards quickly gained a crazy popularity as pets in the United States and Australia. In the 21st century, they were loved everywhere, and now bearded lizards, along with iguanas, have become one of the most beloved pet lizards. However, many inexperienced owners are greatly frightened when their favorite lizard begins to shed its skin. In fact, this process is quite natural. The lizard's molt begins when its skin becomes old and keratinized. Like snakes, lizards try to speed up the molting process by rubbing against surfaces or trying to peel their skin off themselves. In the wild, this happens naturally, but pet owners often have to help their pets get rid of excess scales. Red King Crab as the red king crab becomes an adult, it has to change its carapace many times. Young crabs molt very often, about two or three times a year. The new carapace grows under the old one. When the crab finally gets out of the old armor, it has to hide from any danger waiting for it for about two days. It needs time to get stronger, and its new carapace needs to take enough calcium salt from the water to harden. On the other hand, this is the period that's favorable for the animal's growth. When the carapace is hard, the arthropod cannot change its size, and only when it's still soft is there an opportunity for growth. But when the molting is finished, only the most dangerous oceanic predators can make an attempt on the crab. Apart from humans, the adult red king crab has few dangerous enemies. Its tough carapace, armed with spines, serves as a good shield. In addition, it's not easy to catch it. The animal moves with good speed. Gecko. You've probably heard that in case of danger, some lizards use the amazing trick of escaping and leaving their own tail at the mercy of predators. But did you know that there are some lizards that literally do not spare their own skins to save themselves? For example, the Madagascar day geckos do this. Being caught, they literally jump out of their skin, which doesn't prevent them from growing back the skin and scales in just a few weeks. Special cells in the tissue layer, just below where the scales are attached, completely regenerate the shed skin in less than a month. Moreover, apparently the regeneration does not even leave scars, which means that research into the features of the gecko's regenerative mechanism could push medicine to a whole new level in the future. Scientists first took a closer look at this feature of the Madagascar day gecko only a few years ago. However, the first time they tried to catch the lizard, they failed. Given the fact that some geckos in Madagascar lead nocturnal lifestyles, and have long since taken care to develop camouflage coloration, tracking and catching them is incredibly difficult. Want to know even more interesting facts about animals? Then stay tuned! The most exciting transformations are further in this episode. You had no idea animals could perform such tricks. Periodical Cicadas Once every 17 years, residents of the United States can expect a truly rare and unusual phenomenon an invasion of periodical cicadas. 
but why do millions of insects have to wait underground for nearly two decades? All this time young cicadas, so-called nymphs, fatten up in the roots of trees to make their last molt. It takes most of their lives to prepare them to become full-fledged adult insects. Larvae of periodical cicadas live underground, feeding on the sap of plant roots. After birth, the nymphs climb tall neighboring plants to complete their transformation into adult cicadas. They go through one more cycle of transformation, after which they spend about six days on a leaf, waiting for their exoskeleton to be finally reinforced. Nymphs appear in one place in great numbers almost simultaneously. Sometimes up to 400 individuals can be observed in one square meter of area at the same time. Their mass appearance is a measure of life support through predatory satiety. During the first week after emergence, periodical cicadas are easy prey for reptiles, cats, some birds, and other predators. The basic survival mechanism of cicadas is to sacrifice as many congeners as it takes to satiate predators, guaranteeing the survival of most individuals and, as a result, the entire genus. Some scientists are of the opinion that such a prolonged development of cicadas underground is nothing more than part of a survival strategy, reducing the very attention of predators to the genus. If cicadas appeared every summer, predators would certainly remember the main habitats and appearances of cicadas, but occurrences of cicadas once in 17 years would confuse any predator. Only humans are able to predict such invasions so far. However, Whatever strategies periodical cicadas may employ, their lifespan is still relatively short. Adult periodical cicadas live only a few weeks. In mid-July, they die off completely. Snakes Unlike lizards or crabs, snakes do not need to molt because their old skin has become too small. The main reason snakes change their skin is because it wears out over time and the scales that cover it become damaged. Also, changing the skin allows snakes to get rid of various bacteria and skin parasites, at least temporarily. During the period when the snake is preparing to molt, it changes greatly in appearance. Its old skin fades and dulls, the pattern on it is no longer so clear, and the eyes acquire a cloudy blue hue. This is called the blue-eyed period, which lasts for an average of seven days. However, the process of remains intact, but not in case of very large individuals. The first molt happens immediately after birth, or 7 to 15 days after snakes hatch from the egg, depending on the species. Young snakes change their skin frequently. Sometimes snake scales are renewed every four weeks. Over time, this process happens less frequently. An adult snake sheds its skin on average two to four times a year. The frequency of renewal depends on many different factors, such as the species of snake, its age, the stage of puberty, diet, the presence of bacteria and parasites, etc. Even the temperature and humidity of the air affects the process of molting. A curious fact, it's because of the process of constant renewal of the skin that the snake has become a symbol of medicine and healing. In ancient times, watching snakes, people noticed that periodically they shed their skin, but the reasons for this phenomenon could only be guessed at. As the snake constantly shed its skin, it began to be personified with a symbol of youth. Ancient legends say that the snake holds the key to external life and youth. In many cultures, the molting of snakes has become the basis of legends. For example, the Epic of Gilgamesh mentions the story that in the deep waters, a flower that gave eternal youth grew. It was the snake that stole it and rejuvenated by shedding its old skin. Since then, snakes became immortal, while humans remain mortal. Tarantulas, case of red king crabs, it's unable to grow with its host. This is the reason why tarantulas often have to molt, replacing the old exoskeleton with a new one. When a spider leaves its old armor during molting, a new armor begins to grow under it. A tarantula cannot exist without an exoskeleton, even for some time. The spider grows for one to several days while the layer is still soft and flexible. During the molting period, the tarantula organism undergoes real rebirth which can be safely called true regeneration. In the process of growing new armor, tarantulas can even regenerate lost limbs. Frogs In the famous Russian fairy tale, the princess frog is capable of shedding her skin. But are amphibians actually capable of completely changing their skin? For a long time, this question has caused heated debate among scientists. 
but in the end they were able to come to a consensus. In part, the story of the shedding skin is true. Like all amphibians, the skin of frogs is thin, similar to the translucent fabric. It's the skin that literally sustains the life of all the frogs. It easily passes water with salts dissolved in it, and therefore the body's water-salt balance is regulated through it. If there's a lot of water in the body, the excess is excreted not only through the kidneys but also through the skin. If water is scarce and a frog feels thirsty, it doesn't have to drink, it can just walk through grass wet with dew or sit in a shallow puddle. When the skin ages, wears out, and loses its protective properties, a frog sheds it. At first, the skin comes off the head. The frog rubs one and then the other eye with the front paws as if something got into them. Then, wriggling like a boa constrictor, it scratches its sides with its hind legs. Now you can see that a translucent garment hangs from the frog's body. The frog sends it to its mouth and eats it. Well, that's it for today. Which animal birth impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.